All right, well, um, welcome to NAB, everyone. Um, we've obviously been working very hard, so you've probably, as you've probably heard, to uh, make some nice new products for this year. If we're going to pick a theme for this year, we've been, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where technology advances, and this year um, we've been working very, very hard on Ultra HD. We think that Ultra HD looks amazing, and we've been working on products for you know, almost two years to do Ultra HD. In September, we launched some products um, that do Ultra HD. Um, the HDMI connection on those products do Ultra HD. But this year, we've been working uh, with semiconductor manufacturers for over a year now to get uh, six gig SDI. Now, we wanted to do some of this last year, but we didn't feel we were ready. But to us, six gig SDI is a really good technology. It's, um, for us, it means we can plug our products into SD and HD equipment and then switch it to 6 gig and do Ultra HD. So I think this gives us a, a huge benefit for the customer because we don't have to invest in a whole lot of new infrastructure. So 6 gig SDI, we've got a whole range of products. We've got a whole ecosystem that works with it. And um, I, we think it's very good. We're getting at least 50 meters from it, but a lot of them we get 80 and 100 meters. It's obviously still early days with 6 gig, but we've been shipping 6 gig products now. Um, we have some products that we've upgraded, which are Ultra HD products that are already shipping and we've added six gig to those and they've already been shipping with six gig and we have software updates coming for them in the next week or so. So the Ultra Studio 4K is shipping and every one of those has got six gig SDI in and out. So you can plug that into SD, HD and Ultra HD equipment. So most people of course will be using it for SD and HD work but it switches over to Ultra HD with a single connection. Um, six gig SDI is four times faster than normal HD SDI so we can get Ultra HD resolution, which is four times the resolution. And the pictures look amazing. Decklink 4K Extreme has actually got dual ink um, 6 gig SDI. So that's a really nice upgrade. That's been, also that's already shipping today with 6 gig. And the HyperDeck Studio Pro, that's got 6 gig SDI in and out. Now it's got quad link, dual link, and now 6 gig in and out as well. And it's also getting an upgrade to record Ultra HD on it as well in, in, in ProRes 422. So one solid state disk, it's now like the ultimate Ultra HD broadcast recorder. So from our point of view, what this means is we have a broadcast deck and two capture and playback devices that support Ultra HD. So obviously that means that's good. Now what we want to do is extend on. So this is where we get to the new products. And if you look at Ultra HD workflow, the, the biggest thing is we've got the post-production side covered with DaVinci and the capture and playback products. But really the live production side is the exciting bit because that's the fastest way to generate a lot of content quickly. So we've been working very hard on a, on a range of products that give us the whole live production workflow. The first product is ATEM Production Studio 4K. This is a four, it's an Ultra HD live production switcher. It's really nice, it's machine metal front, it's got an aux output, the whole switcher switches over to Ultra HD. It's got eight inputs in total, four HDMI and four SDI. The four SDI inputs are ultra, you know, six gig, and the HDMI inputs also handle Ultra HD. So that whole switcher switches across from SD, HD, and Ultra HD. And it just works. The program outputs are in Ultra HD. It's got a down converted output, so you can run a normal HD feed when you're running the whole thing in Ultra HD. It's got, uh, there's no breaker cables or anything. It's got analog audio on it, so you can run into the normal analog audio mixes. So it's kind of a nice blend of technology between the latest Ultra HD digital connections, and you've still got your analog connections to connecting the analog mixes guy, you know, the analog mixer guy. But it does have a full audio mixer in it. It can mix from all the audio channels coming in. So it's a pretty sophisticated bit of gear. It's a whole new design internally. It's got a normal HD multi-view out, so you can just use a TV for doing all your monitoring. So it's a pretty powerful product. It's, uh, it almost was available today, but we found one little bug we've got to fix that we'll need a week or two. But it'll be available this month. It's $2,000, it's 1995. So very, um, very nice product. So what that gives us, of course, is the whole live production workflow now. You can do a live production, plug in cameras, and just get going in Ultra HD now. And, and that's a fast way. You've got the HyperDeck Studio Pro for doing the recording. You've got the Ultra Studio 4K for doing streaming or anything like that. So it's a really, I think it's a very nice uh, process for generating a lot of Ultra HD content quickly. So it gets us to some monitoring, because obviously we need to do that. Um, here's something we've kind of needed for a while. Um, we think it's something that's not done that well. But we've got this beautiful new audio, uh, Blackmagic audio monitor. It supports 6 gig SDI and Ultra HD. So it's got an SDI input, analog audio input, AES inputs, all the, the audio inputs. 
But what it can also do, it's got HDMI out, so you can use it as an SDI to HDMI converter. It'll actually, you can plug one of those giant Ultra HD TVs into it and monitor on that, but it'll embed all the audio channels. It's got really easy to use buttons on the front. It's got the video and audio integrated in, so it's not like, one, like an audio monitoring device that then you have to sort of retrofit video into. It's been designed from the ground up to have that. It's a beautiful machine, metal front panel. It's got a little display there showing your video standards. But of course, you can just switch it and use it as an audio monitor. It's got true B, VU ballistics on the metering on the front. And the, it's got dual subwoofers, so it's got a really nice sound. We gave it to an, uh, an audio uh, engineer, and he just said it's the best set of meters he's got in his, in his building, and he didn't want to give it back. He was listening to the music all day on it, which is a pretty big thing for an audio engineer. Um, so we're really very happy with this. It's got all the types of audio and video connections on the back, but it's kind of nice that it does 6 gig in Ultra HD. So we've got a really nice monitoring solution for the output of the, of the live production switcher. Because I find when you're in the middle of a busy production, you just want to see the audio levels. And you can see that's available next month. Uh, it's really close for $1,495. We've also this year upgraded our RFM Studio Converter. It's all 6 gig, but we haven't got optical fiber modules yet to do 6 gig. So it's a really replacement for the current model we had. This is the, you know, the, the converter that goes out to four optical fiber camera converters and lets you run optical fiber for your cameras. Um, it's nice, but the difficulty with the current model is that we didn't, you had to use a set of headphones to use it for the talkback, because obviously you've got talkback and talent and everything built into it. So what we've done this year is we used a nice machine metal front panel, built the talkback control in the front, you put microphones, headphones. We're using general aviation headsets now for our talkback. They're really low cost and very easy to get hold of, but they're really robust. So we think that's a much better solution for talkback and television, because you can buy them from everywhere. They're like $200, up to $1,000 for noise cancelling. So. If you want to do a band or something, you can have a great set of noise cancelling headphones, a you know, whole set talk, you know, a headset that's really quite low cost, but they're really robust. That's the rear view, so we've got analog outputs for running audio, audio mixes. So this, the great thing about this product, it's available at the same price as the old one. The great thing about this is that it is all six gigs, so when optical fiber modules come out, which they're probably going to be pretty close, the customers will be able to upgrade this in the field just by plugging new modules in. So obviously gets us to a camera. So we've got the whole live production workflow going on, and we've got the post-production workflow going on. What we really needed was a 4K camera. So we've got a nice new camera this year. It's in the same body as the last year, so we can use all the same accessories. There's so many accessories have been done for the camera, it's been exciting. Um, but it's got a, a, a full 30, Super 35mm uh, size sensor, and it's a global shutter. And it's really nice. I mean, the pictures coming out of it are really beautiful. Not quite the same contrast range as the current camera, but it's a really nice contrast range and a very nice look. It's a very clean, nice looking sensor. It's EF mount because the sensor itself is way too big for micro four thirds. So we just literally can't use a micro four thirds mount version of this. So we're using EF. Let's use a lot of really nice low cost lenses. Plus you can get Zeiss lenses and everything with EF mount on the back. So you can run, run those. So you can run all the cine lenses and all the rigs or a small lens. It's got six gig SDI out, so those cameras feed the switches directly. And you can get a whole Ultra HD workflow. You can see a nice big sensor in the front, it's quite large, so you can get the depth of field. Um, and you can, you know, motion is, is different with the global shutter. It's the same connectors on the side, same Thunderbolt, the six gig SDI connection, exactly the same size chassis. So we've got a whole Ultra HD production workflow for live production. So I think this is going to be very exciting because what it means is people can you can pretty much in the next few months, you're going to be able to do the whole workflow for live production. So that's going to generate a lot of content. I think you've got a $4,000 camera running into a $2,000 switcher to a $2,000 record, you know, broadcast deck, all doing Ultra HD, all doing 6 gig. It's pretty much like wiring up stuff now, except it's four times the resolution. But you can run it in SD and HD for as long as you like, and when you want to switch over, you can. So I think this is a really exciting workflow. And if you think about it, live production is the area where Ultra HD can be useful now. It might not be broadcast, but at least you can capture the masters in Ultra HD. But the big screens at venues are Ultra HD size. Those LED screens can be stacked up. You know, this is quite a, a, a big thing that's already happening now. The, the projectors from Sony already exist. There's churches. There's all kinds of convention centers. They have these things already. So now you can run Ultra HD up into that and get an incredible picture. And you should see what supers and everything look like. The guy, we've got an Ultra HD and 6 gig display on the front of the booth, and it looks incredible. You've got you know, graphics and lower thirds and everything, all done in Ultra HD, and it looks just amazing. It's very much like the old days when we went from SD to HD. It's that whole feeling again. But the great thing is the Ultra HD TVs are shipping now. So we've got all the production equipment shipping now. We've got all the televisions shipping now. What we want to see is more broadcast and getting the content to people. But it's really exciting. And in, in live production, 
that content's often, you know, that delivery of the content is actually the venue itself. DaVinci Resolve has had a big update this year. Um, obviously, it's the workflow side of, of things. This is what DaVinci looked like a few years ago before we bought it. I thought I'd put these slides up. There's a quick memory line, you know, trip down memory lane of what we had. Um, obviously, we turned it into that a few years ago. And we upgraded the UI. We got it onto Mac. We ended up getting on some Windows. We added a lot more camera formats. Um, last year, we added a major new update on the user interface. So it made it much faster to use. People could move quicker, but it also quietly added some capability for us to put things into it that we couldn't do. You know, people wanted plugins and things like that. We couldn't really do that on the old user, user interface. So this year, we've, last year we laid the foundation in the user interface to really do some big changes that we've been able to do this year. So DaVinci Resolve 10 is all about the workflow. What we've been working on very, very hard, and there's a lot of fighting amongst people at the moment of this people taking on that people. What we really want to do is try and bring all this stuff together. Our really big aim is trying to get the whole workflow going because when it comes down to it, the customers want this stuff to work. They're trying to do you know, high-end movies, television programming, TV commercials. Different editors are using different NLE applications and they want to move around, they want to use whatever tool they want to use. What we're trying to do is make all that stuff work. Um, and we've got some unique capabilities in DaVinci that really make that very important. You know, we work with the raw camera files, but we're also you know, generating the files that go to cinemas. So we've got the capability of onlining right from the, you know, the raw camera files. So a lot of the stuff we've done this year is to really help the whole workflow process, but that workflow is changing as well. We've got a lot of media management in DaVinci at the front end, so this year we can do a lot more sound syncing and other features like that, but we've also got a thing called Resolve Live. We can grade from the live camera input. You can plug the camera into Resolve and you can actually grade over the top of the live input. And that's why we added Thunderbolt to the Blackmagic Cinema camera last year. We didn't get this feature in last year. We finally got it this year. But you can plug that camera in. We've got one on the front of the booth and you can grade live. So it means you can set up lights and things on set and interactively do the lighting with the grading. And then when you save those grades, they'll relink to the files when the files come in from the camera. So a very powerful workflow. The online editing's been massively upgraded. One of the problems we've been having, of course, is a lot of people are generating different scenes in large jobs. DaVinci's always had multi-user. It's always had remote grading and some of those sorts of things, but it generally assembled the edit. It didn't really let you do too much with the edit. This year, we've done a lot more work to improve, you know, improve all the online editing. So the unique thing is we can work with all the raw camera files, whereas the NLE apps tend to be 10-bit YEV. We're 32-bit you know, float YRGB, but we can be Aces color space or any color space. DaVinci actually doesn't really have any you know, locked in color space, so we can tend to be whatever color space the final output needs to be. Um, one thing we've added into DaVinci is the, uh, these are the easy DCP capability to generate the digital package files directly. Um, if you buy a license for that product, DaVinci will actually do the rendering inside it. So unlike, funny enough, film, what this means is DaVinci can go from a raw camera file, online editing straight to the digital package file, for the cinema in one pass. And that's like projecting your negative in the cinemas, which you couldn't obviously do with film. That's kind of what's going on here. And so I think it's really exciting that we can bring projects in from Final Cut Pro, bring them in from Avid, online them in here, rearrange them, re-edit them in here, take a scene back to Final Cut, back to Avid. You can have different editors working on different NLE apps. It's totally up to them. This is about the customers choosing what they want to do. And I think there's so much in this industry where people force the customers to work in different workflows they should be able to do whatever they like. I think you know, what you want the tools to do is go, yes, I can do that. You want to bring the project in from here? Yes, that can happen. So we're just constantly working. That's what we've really been focused on this year. So a lot more power in here, title tools, speed changes, all these things. They're all supported, trim modes, all that, which means if you bring your project in here from Final Cut, you can take it back there, and a lot of that comes back, or pretty much all of it comes back with the project. So you can keep re-editing it, so you can, you, know, you can get a scene from an editor, pass the scene back to the editor, and you can keep working it, or you can, keep, you can finish it in here. It's just everything works everywhere, and that's the whole point. And it's extremely high quality, of course, in here, working off the raw camera files. So you've got all that raw Bayer data. You can do really high quality. You know, we're working with the Hollywood guys all the time to get the debayering better and better and better. You're covering more resolution, you know, and just the mathematics guys go nuts for that stuff. They live for it. Of course, there's more color correction capability this year. We've got plugins. We support OpenEFX plugins. So that's been really interesting to see how that all works with the looks and color correction looks. But also means post-production facilities can write their own plugins and plug them in as well. And again, the delivery side, we can do those digital package files directly in DaVinci once you buy the license from the Easy DCP guys. So you can go from the raw camera file online straight to the digital package file for the cinema. So there really is no other compression or, or rendering passes in between that. It just goes from one straight to the other. So there's no higher quality way of getting a cinema file to the cinema. So the results will be incredible. 
So we've got a few other things that we're going to go through and then one last exciting thing. We've got a product called Blackmagic Multidock. We found guys going out with a camera were filling one, two or three disks and then coming back and going, well, how am I going to edit that? They're trying to copy files. The whole point of using an SSD is you edit off the disk. You don't need to copy the files. So you don't really want to have two or three docking cables. So we built this rack mount box. If you've shot on three disks, you've got three disks with content, bring it back, plug them in. They're all online. You can edit straight off those disks. It's Thunderbolt based. Each dock in there has a separate uh, SATA chip, so it's full bandwidth. And you can, of course, stripe them all together if you want to build a disk array. But it's just such a nice way of handling the media coming in from cameras. It's uh, available in May for $600. So it'll be pretty nice. I think it'll be really useful. And it's just it's fast to dock things into a rack like that. This is a fun product, and we've got one uh, running over here. Originally, our Smart View Geo, the dual ra uh, rack monitor, we actually wanted to do this. But we got so caught up in other things, we haven't had a chance. But this year, we've done it. We've got all the scopes from UltraScope, and we put them into the Smart View Duo. So this is called Smart Scope Duo, and you can pick, I think, six or seven different scope views in either screen. So they're both independent. So you can have waveform, vector, RGB parade, which is awesome for color correction, YV parade, which the engineering guys love, histogram, which is fantastic for doing live shoots. So you can see where the iris settings are, and audio scopes with 16 channels of audio and a stereo phase meter. And that's 995. It's shipping now. And it's just built in. You just you can use USB or Ethernet to control all that. You select what sort of scope you want, and it just works. It's fantastic. And it just sits there. You can have the waveform vector scope, like the traditional waveform vector scope. But you can have picture and audio. I, for telecine and color correction, I love the uh, RGB parade and vector. So you can interact as you're doing color grading. You can see all the, the RGB parade interacting. And it's a fantastic tool to use. We've got some on the color correction systems here and some over on the wall doing the different scopes. So it's a lot of fun. You just turn the scopes on, there's RGB Parade, there's Vector, and that's how it works. It's pretty simple, actually, and it looks awesome because you have a big wall of monitors for live camera. You know, when you're doing live production, you get a lot of camera feeds coming in. You can build a wall of monitors, and you can just change which one on a, to be a scope whenever you like. So this is another couple of little products we're doing, um, mostly for OEM. Uh, it's called Decklink Mini Recorder and Decklink Mini uh, Monitor. They're a very low-profile car. They've got a low-profile shield and a normal shield. So you can put them in rack mount servers and just for, you know, simple edit monitoring or server playback. You know, good for the OEM guys who are building playback servers or ingest servers or streaming you know, um, servers. So it's a, sort of a product we built for those guys. There's two models. They're available in a few weeks' time. But a bit of a bottleneck in QA this year, trying to get all this stuff through because there's so many things. But we'll also, just one last thing before we get to the final little camera. Universal Video Hub, our Universal Video Hub range, which are our card-based routers. We've had some big price drops in some of the components for those. As we've been manufacturing more of them, we've been able to secure some better prices for parts, and they've come down quite a lot. As you can see, the cross point alone has come down from $20,000 to nine. So some of the other product parts have come down as well, so that it now makes the 72 by 72 card-based router lower cost than our all-in-one broadcast video hub. So it's kind of really nice you can have a card-based router that low cost. So obviously the last thing we've got is so the, last year we introduced this camera, and this is the marketing line we used for it. It was a digital you know, um, film camera with a wide 13 stops of dynamic range for film look. And it's been awesome. We, obviously, we had some supply issues once we started production. We hit our production deadline, and we started production, and we found, obviously, that the sensor manufacturer had some quality issues, and we lost five months in that. But we got that sorted out. As you can see, what happened to Boeing it happens. And it's unfortunate and you know, annoying when this happens, but we worked pretty hard to get that going. We've shipped thousands of cameras now, and everyone's been really happy with them. It's actually been fun to see people in the booth with our camera filming our other cameras, which is kind of really cool. Um, but what we wanted to do is, the funny thing about this product is it's, it's small for a cinema camera, but it's kind of big. I took it out to film the family, because I'm like, hey, I would like to film the kids in cinema kind of quality, so I'll take the camera out. But I found it was just bulky. It felt like it was kind of taking care of the camera more than the kids. So we started thinking, what would be, wouldn't it be great if we could make an even smaller camera? You know, a small camera can be small. A big camera can't be small but a small camera can be bigger. So what could we do? So we come up with this. So what we've got is a Super 16 digital film camera, but we've packed it in the most incredibly small size that's usable. It's much, much smaller than the camera, that, the bigger camera. It's a HD sensor, so it's not quite as sharp as the uh, 2.5K cinema camera, but the images are so similar, it's amazing. I mean, the dynamic range is the same. It's a Super 16 sensor size, so if you put a Super 16 cine lens on there, it actually shoots exactly the same as Super 16 film. But we've used a micro four thirds lens mount because that's just much more range of affordable lenses, plus smaller lenses too. It's really tiny. It's literally like a point and shoot camera. But we've got a nice big handle on the side so you can grab it properly. 
the um, it's really tiny. It's it's a beautiful little camera. It's funny you got to grab one and hold it before you really realize how nice it is. You can see the difference in sizes between the old camera and the new one. So it's been a lot of fun to work on. We've learned a lot building this. It's actually very much feel like exercising and you get better at something because you've worked harder. This thing has taught us so much. It's the board inside is like origami folded around on itself. It's incredible. But it really is a full digital cinema camera in there. It's amazing. All the menus are on the back. It records to an SD card. We're recording ProRes and a lossless version of uh, Cinema DNG, which is not very common, the lossless version of Cinema DNG, because it's mildly compressed, but it's a lossless compression mathematically. So it's the same as RAW, but we can get RAW down onto the SD card, which is great. But we're going to add support for that in DaVinci, so it shouldn't be an issue. Um, got all the same menus on the back. It's the same resolution screen as the current camera. You can see the sensor size in the front. It's a bit hard to see. You can see the whole die there, but you can see in the front top here is the Super 16 size uh, sensor. Um, very, very high quality, wide dynamic range. Really nice. It's an active mount, so you can control the small lenses. Beautiful screen on the back. It's really nice to focus with. It's so sharp. It's the same resolution as the bigger camera, so it's good. All the connections on the side are, are, are sort of there. They're different connections. We've got remote controls. So you can remotely locate the camera. Microphone, headphones. Um, the microphone is the same as a camera recorder style microphone. So you can kind of plug all those kinds of mics in or even an audio mixer. It's a micro HDMI on the side, but it's got all the overlays that the bigger camera has. So you can plug in an on-set monitor and it looks the same. And of course, power. And the removable battery, that's a Nikon style battery. It's a common garden variety battery available from lots of different people. So we're using that. Get about 60 minutes of power out of the battery and you can flop it out. The uh, SD card goes in the bottom. So obviously that uh, contrast range test that we love to do, we love this building, we keep going there to do a contrast range test. It's all white inside with big windows that shine through. That's a DSLR camera. That's ours. So you can see how it's captured all the view out the window. I was using the camera for in Christmas morning filming the kids and we got the same windows and out through I had all of the light out in the garden plus I had everything inside the room and it was a bit pretty dark in the room. I pulled out my camera to take a photo uh, and I couldn't do it even on HDR mode. So it really is an amazing dynamic range. It's so filmy, which is why I think it's so nice to use this camera personally. It's film students can use it, but you know, it's nice just to use as a personal camera for people that are from the video industry. And then you can color grade the shot to really give it whatever look you want. And you can pick all your, you know, your clip points that, where you want to do it. So it really is quite a dramatic difference. And not only are we much sharper, because the compression is high quality ProRes, it's not all raw, it's not a heavy, heavy compression. It's a very light, very professional compression but also it's got all that dynamic range. So you've got so much control, which is really what we want for DaVinci so you can get the best out of your images. And it can be big. This can be a big camera. And if you look at the front of the booth, we actually have a giant lens on the camera. That's the great thing about it. I mean, it doesn't have to be small. It can be small, but it can also be big. A big camera can't be small, but a small camera can be big. So it's, you know, we've taken shots with that and you just put pretty much any glass on it you like. You can put, uh, yeah, all kinds of rigs. I mean, it really is a very flexible design. So it's great that it's small because it's great for handheld, but it's also got a lot of flexibility. You can turn it into other shapes depending on how you rig it up. You've got little steady cam type arrangements, all kinds of interesting variations. I was really quite surprised last year, but how, much, how many third party you know, vendors there are with making all kinds of exciting camera accessories. And it's been really a lot of fun to work with. We've got a lot of their products on the front of the booth this year, a lot of choice. And of course, the Super 16 Cine lenses. So you can dust off the old Super 16 more lens and use them. And they actually work the same way as what they did on a Super 16 camera. You know, the framing, everything's basically the same. It feels very much like it would have felt when you're shooting on a Super 16 film camera. The dynamic range, the way the lens works, it's all the same. That'll be available in July for 995. Um, so it'll be exciting. I think it'll be fun. Hopefully everyone goes out and buys one and we can all film the whole world in film quality. I mean, I don't even know what's going to happen with this camera. People are going to use it for things we haven't even dreamt of. The current camera has been like that. I think this one's going to be the same. Where we, we, you know, we're thinking that you could take one into dangerous environments like war zones or even protest marches or just general things and capture a sort of film quality instead of it being that, that video look. This is a real film look. So I think it'll be very exciting. So just wanted to thank everyone for coming and hopefully you guys are impressed with some of the stuff we've done. Yeah.